We're popping and locking with Danny Trejo. And Lily Reinhardt with the cast of Chemical Hearts. Plus, we hang out with my comedian and our friend, Jesus Trejo. It's all going down on... The Zoo! <laughs> And we are here on the zoo. Welcome. We're actually having a fun beach day. Beautiful day. It's summertime. Out here, Southern California, you know. Venice um, Beach. Slight breeze. Yeah. Yeah. Slight breathe. <laughs> I know. <laughs> no, I, so I do that too. I, I say breeze, breathe. I, say, I was too excited. Oh my God. But you know, Slight but I know breeze. what you mean. I, I, I need people in my life that know what I mean with my text because I do a bunch of typos. Oh yeah, say me too. I type really fast. Okay, and I talk really fast, so that's why you and me are a pair, and we're doing the summertime edition of today's zoo, and we're going to talk about what it's been like to have a summer in the age of COVID. That's today's big, big deal. deal. One more time. Wait, Wait that camera? camera? Yeah, hey, yeah. Him, his camera. Like do like <laughs> his camera's the his camera's the main camera. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> I was looking here. That's fine. Time. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> okay. And we're going to talk today about what summertime is like in the age of COVID, and that's today's Big, Big deal. deal. What's your summer in the age of COVID been like? Um, I feel like my summer has been uh, productive, actually. Like, I had to take a moment to just, like, sit down and really ask myself, how do I keep myself entertained? And how you have you kept how, yourself entertained? Well, I like to run. I actually run out here on the beach. You come uh, out here to Venice? Yeah. Okay, cool. I run usually from like Venice to Santa Monica, but like, you know, it feels like a little Baywatch to yeah. me. So you just got to get that run in and you're like, <laughs> you're so funny. wind in the air. Yeah, I run too. I, so I live in, around Hollywood, so I do all the, you know, the hikes, the runions and mm -hmm. the Griffith Park and all that stuff. But I, man, I'm getting kind of bored. I actually want to get back in the gym. Um, so how have you been, came, how have you been keeping safe? I know we, we, like I had my mask here, by the way. Yeah, I have my mask I over there too, sure, by the way. We're and, super safe on the show, all right? Before we got uh, down, uh, I said, you know, we're in V-Town and I'm like, hold on, is my blue bandana okay or should I be wearing a red one? And you said... You'll be fine. Why? Because this would need to be like, you know, slightly brighter blue. Royal blue, like, Royal like blue. Dodger blue. Yeah. Yeah, you can't, it's like Dodgers versus Angels, okay? I did say that, you know, because nope. I know. Well, but you know what? I'm good because I know the guy, he's known as the mayor of Venice, uh, Cesar Montario. His nickname is Block. We featured him on Latin Nation a couple times. He's a, a, you know, a photographer, but he's like one of the old school, like, uh, you know, no Mexican-Americans from this neighborhood. Like, back when this was like, you know, like the ghetto by the yeah. sea. Dogtown. And the, exactly. And then like they had the... They had property, him and his family had property. So then they actually ended up becoming rich because they were sitting on property that all of a sudden Again, in the 2000s boomed. became like big. But I gotta say this year with like COVID things shutting down, there's a little bit of a, you know, a, a, an old school, should we say vibe kind of creeping in back into Venice. Okay. Well, that's because who's left? the people that actually live here. So I've been here my entire life. I actually thought about it. I'm like, I, I left for college and I'm like, do I want to move back to LA? Cause it's so congested. There's a bunch of people that, you know, I don't know. But yeah, so like rent is going to be right. affected. Well, rent right? is already dropping, isn't it? Yeah, it is dropping. Okay, so, so I'm kind good. of excited. Cause that means I get to find my like home here. Property values yeah, are going to drop values, a little bit. Exactly. It might be actually affordable, but I doubt it because it's LA. I was about to cough. <laughs> And in my face? No, not in, in your my face. Air? No, was listen. I supposed to breathe that? No, check this out. But every because you know what I was doing before because I do the very legal practice now of smoking CBD cannabis. Okay. Okay, so I can say that on the air because it's very legal, legal now. Right. I've noticed that in the in the age of COVID, I haven't heard too many people coughing or sneezing. Okay. Because they like hold it yeah, in. Yeah, people. Yeah, people hold it in. Have I've you? held it in a few times. Yeah. What? I get really bad allergies. Okay. So like, what was it? That April, like May time. Yeah. It, you saw me in the office, remember? When you're like, why are your eyes red? And I'm like, my allergies, man. So and I'm, like, I said my eyes are red because I'm smoking pop, and your eyes <laughs> yeah, are red because of the allergies. Yeah, my allergies. Okay. And so like, I'll try to sneeze, and I'll like notice people, and you kind of just you know hold it in a little yeah. bit. Yeah. <laughs> Have you heard? Uh, when it comes to indoors, I wear. I was one of the first people to wear masks indoors. Outdoors, oh, I yeah, feel the right. circulation. <laughs> You know, I feel a little bit more comfortable not wearing the mask, but when I'm indoors, I definitely wear a mask. But I was one of the first people to start wearing masks. So I was at this uh, pharmacy. This is before anybody was told to wear masks. And I'm wearing the bandana. What a like time. Like this. And, and I'm just looking. And, and what I do, I hate getting the cards because everyone touches them, so I grab a bag. I already get the bag and I start putting my stuff in the bag. Oh, okay. So I'm there putting stuff in a bag <laughs> with a bandana and I see this Looking little old lady. Yeah, and this little old lady who was like 85, 90 years old, this like Russian woman or something, she's like in the corner and she, she just goes, stink eye. She thinks I'm like robbing the place. And then I and I turn around, I'm like, I'm just wearing the bandana because of the COVID. Right, right, right. So, but she didn't trust me. Yeah. Did you have no any moments? You, what? Do you have any moments that I know? Let's, let's Who could talk the fastest? All right, let's go. <laughs> Do you, have you had any funny moments with people like that, like awkward moments over the summer where it was just like, you um, have to explain yourself. 
Yeah, a little bit. Um, when, well, when I run, too. Like, I have to admit, I take off my mask when I'm running, so I actually, like, have it flapping. Right. I have it in one ear, and I have it flapping, and then I put it on. Because, like, I can't, and then I'm, like, sweating, and then I actually broke out a little bit, you know? So, yeah, banana, I can't do bandanas because of my makeup, you know? So, I don't know. I feel like girls What have do it you a tell harder. people as you're running by or something, or do you say anything? No, you kind of, like, move a little bit, you yeah. know? So, like... I just avoid uh, avoid them, but I think look when you're running, you're running by people. It's like it's not like I return the face. stink eye when they're walking and they're not wearing the mask. <laughs> I mean, oh, I so you want them to wear the mask so, so you don't I'm have like, to? You could be wearing the mask because I'm like breathing hard. You know, I'm going Olympic status at this moment, and you're like so you're just walking at your leisure. <laughs> How's the living situation with your four guy uh, roommates? It's been good. Yeah. Yeah. Not one of them has gotten on your nerves. Like what? So what? Are, what are what are disagreements like in your house? Do you guys have like house meetings, or is it just like you know back and forth? You know. Um. No. So I think it's really funny because we all known each other for so long that it's just like you know I don't know. You haven't had one like nobody got. You guys haven't gotten on each other's nerves this Why summer. Why would we get each other's nerves? Because you guys are around each other all the time. Each other. You That's like being around do. the same people all the time? I just want to love them and they want to love me back. Okay, I'm sure they do, but like you, you, sometimes you get in fights with people that you love. Sometimes people that you love when annoy the hell fight? out of you. Uh, oh, yesterday? With who? Because I'm planning this little like mini trip to Joshua Tree, like a little like okay, a little Bernie Burning Man, and like the guy that. that's organizing it. He's, he has like an Excel sheet with an hourly schedule for everybody and he, he's updating That does not minutes. sound like a vacation. No. <laughs> no, the thing is that he's this, he, so he's a surgeon, but he loves to party and he's putting up like most of the money. And so he's inviting a lot of people and paying for them, oh, right? Dang, They're that's just, intense. Yeah, so he feels that he can just like dictate what we're gonna be doing for okay. the three days. And you're not a person to I, like a me, me and a couple people gave him money and we're like, look, we're giving him money, we have a room, cause it's like a bunch of houses. We have a room, like we'll go, we'll go with our flow. I'm on my own schedule. Yeah, yeah. And, and I had to have a talk with him and he's like, oh, but the, the, you know, I'm just, I'm trying to organize to make it funner. And I'm like, I'm like, dude, like it's a little much. I don't need to be pressured into an itinerary that's, you know, it's, I, I'm, I'm a Cuban, I'm an Aries. Yeah. And I came on a little strong, you know, he's like an Israeli guy, and he was completely taken off. Taken caught, caught off. He was sending me but all these texts. But never in his life has he met a Cubano. Uh, now he has. <laughs> now he, was, he has. So anyway, it's a weird summer in the age of But COVID. now you get the picture, right? Okay. Of Venice, yeah, out so, here, in the beautiful summer. Look, the, the most important thing is that we're using this as an excuse to get out of the office. That's true. You know? It's a very beautiful Because day. I needed to take my mask off. My V13 friendly mask, where is it? Oh, here it is. By the way, how was my audio on that with the, with the bandana? Oh, you know what moment I, I did have? I the wall all the time. What? I did have a very funny story, which, you know, it could okay, be used to Okay, go ahead. Like, Eddie, you're going to edit some of this. <laughs> um, it was really funny because at work, I'm conditioned. Like, every time I get out of my desk, I have to have my mask on, right? So it'll be like that second thought where like, oh, go back and get it. At home, I was in my room, and I guess I'm just conditioned now to look for my mask. I left my room to go into the living room, and I went back for my mask. That's hilarious. And I came back, and I'm like... Wait, I'm in the house. I don't need a mask. <laughs> okay, do me a favor. Do you have your mask with you? No, it's over there. What? Is it in the box? Yeah. Okay, hold do on. I, put, let me go get it. Let's put, no, no. Kind of found my spot. But if my ass is wet, it's the grass. It's not because I pooped myself, okay? <laughs> uh, all right, put your mask on while I toss the commercial. Who did you talk to from Chemical Romance or Chemical Hearts? Lily Reinhardt and the whole cast. Okay, so she's saying because she has her mask on, and I'll put mine on too. Lily Reinhardt yes. from um, the Riverdale? Yes. She interviewed her but about this new movie called Chemical Hearts. It's coming up right after this. I'm going to keep my bandana on. Keep it locked. You're watching the zoo. All right, guys, we're back. We're on Venice Beach. AK and the man, that's the new uh, team, that's the new duo, it's a little rap duo. We're doing some old school hip hop, no reggaeton, sorry, I don't do reggaeton, I'm not doing that. Come on, yo. No, 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 that was no, early no. 2000s no. reggaeton. Yeah, we don't listen to reggaeton no. events. Maybe on that side of it. Reggaeton. Not on Come that on, side. reggaeton. Dude, I remember when reggaeton came out, I was like, oh, this is not gonna last. And they're like, no, no, this is last. Oh, what, we like Daddy Yankee and oh, like. Oh my gosh, don't even get me started. I'm a hip hop guy. Um, you talked to somebody famous from yeah, Riverdale. Do you I like did. the show Riverdale? I actually haven't watched her. Okay, neither have I. Okay. Uh, who did you talk to? I talked to Lily Reinhardt. All okay. right. And the whole cast of Chemical Hearts. What's Chemical Hearts about? So it's like a new movie uh, that Amazon put out, and it's actually really cute. It's like about teenagers, um, and one of them has a complicated past, and the other one falls like madly in love. Uh, so I got to ask them a couple questions. Which actually, I have a question for you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, one more. So if you had to be a teenager again, what age would it be, and why? I've been 17 my entire life. When I was seven, I was Actually, 17. I never grew I'm right now. Yeah, I, no, I've always. But when I was a little kid, I was like, a, I was like a little older for my age because I felt like a 17-year-old. Why? But 
everyone everyone has their spirit has like an age. Oh, okay, okay. And then I always felt like 17 even at seven. I was like into more into music than toys. But now that I'm older, I still feel 17. Okay. So I've so, always been. So I what go, was going on while you were 17 though? It's not what I was going on in that age. Is that 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 I've always just had. I mean, don't don't I come off like a 17 year old? No. I mean, you have like a young spirit, but like 17 specific, you know, like. Yeah, like right before you're an adult. But yeah, like older okay, 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 you can okay, like okay, kind of get in trouble trying to do adult things. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So right before you're an adult. Yeah, right okay. before I was legally um, able to get arrested for things. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Prime age, prime age. Yeah, what uh, about you? I wouldn't do my teenage years again. Well, uh, what, what age would you I'm do? I'm here, again? I'm happy, and I'm proud. <laughs> I think that you're perpetually 23. You know, I actually, yeah, I love that age. Okay. It's like where you're old enough, but not old enough yet. You know, to like have to have full on responsibilities, like my house, my car, like all of that kind of stuff. Like you're figuring it out, you know? Listen. You have enough to handle just trying to remember what segments we're tossing to and where we're meeting up to do a shoot for the zoo. Summertime, COVID edition, Venice Beach. Who are we seeing right now? Lily Reinhardt. And, and the Kemba cast Kemba of? Kemba Carts. So in the movie, uh, we kind of see like the turmoils and you know, the angst of just being a teenager. Um, mm -hmm. But you yourself, if you could go back to any of your teenage years, what age would it be and why? My junior year of high school, 11th grade was amazing because you have that seniority but you're not you don't have to worry about colleges in the same way and you're that was a great year I did um I did a, a, a musical that year that was so fun and silly in community yeah it would be 11th grade maybe 19 okay at that point I guess maybe you're out of high school and you don't have to do that anymore I don't know some people love high school though I think I would start at ninth grade because I was on a roll. And then things just kind of like flipped its little ugly That's head. where you peaked? That's where <laughs> I was like, yeah, I feel like I could have been like superwoman. Character in this um, movie, it, she's going through a lot. You know, it's not just one episode, but multiple episodes of her ha really having to like deal with what she went through. What would you say was the most emotionally draining day for you on set to get into character and be like, this is gonna happen? I think uh, the scene where I'm in my wedding, the wedding dress at the end in the water um, was, I don't, I think it was like, it was very, I think it was late at night when we were shooting that. And it was also the first week of filming. So it was very, um, it happened very quickly. We had to do that scene very quickly quick in the process of filming so it felt kind of like whoa I didn't even have time to kind of like settle into this character yet I'm like already do you think we fall into this flaw of like yearning or wanting someone that's like emotionally unavailable he sees uh, a love that like his parents both have and I think he's really craving that because he's never had it before but I think he definitely he wants that love and he sees that it's possible in her and he sees who she was in the past based on like Facebook and stuff. And also like the idea he has of her in her mind. And he's trying to like bring her back to that so that then they can have like a relationship. I think we're, we're convinced and, and, and I hope people have the discussions that it shouldn't be this way, that we can fix people. And I think that's the issue that Henry has in the film that he thinks he can fix Grace. And it's, it's not only messy for the person who's trying to fix the person, but it's messy. Uh, uh. <laughs> Stay tuned, because after the break, we're talking to Jesus Trejo. Only on the zoo. And we are back on the zoo. Umberto, yeah. let us know who you spoke to. Well, I'm talking to you right now. Oh, OK. Do you, want to do, do you have any questions to ask me about me asking to you okay, questions? Okay, sure. Who is Jesus Trejo? No, that's a question about Jesus Trejo. You should have asked me a question about how I ask you questions, but that's fine. I get it. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna entertain my, you know, my mind game anyway. So Umberto spoke to Jesus Trejo. <laughs> Okay, how was that interview? <laughs> he's, well, did you look him up? Yeah, I did, actually. What is he? he uh, he's a Latino, right. right? Single child. He actually has this really funny video that I related to where it's like losing hair in your 20s. Yeah. So that was the first video I clicked on. That's so <laughs> I funny. I was like, yes, I relate. Let's see what you're about. So he's well, he's a comedian, and he's, he's like a rising comedian right now. He's really getting to the next level. He's a regular at the comedy store. Hopefully that happens again, that we're oh, seeing okay. stand-up comedy. But um, he had a Showtime special called Stay Home Son. And the thing about uh, Jesus is that he takes care. He's a caretaker of his old parents. He has like old <laughs> Mexican parents, you know, from Sinaloa. It's not from Sinaloa, but somewhere in Mexico. And uh, they're like 70 or 80 years old. 
you know, and so he, his whole comedy routine is a, largely based on that. He's kind of okay, like a nerdy, yeah, yeah. smart Mexican, which is fun because he's not playing like the Cholo character, gangster characters. He plays it's like, like you relatable. Know, the, yeah. Yeah. So he just came out with a documentary about taking care of his parents called Care to Laugh. Okay. And it's actually sponsored by AARP. So. Uh, <laughs> Stop. Yeah. No, really. It's, uh, yeah. He has. They saw his acting. They're like, finally, a comedian we can get behind. Oh my God. Okay. He's also the best comedian right now to get behind for any corporation or group because he's scandal free. Like no uh, one's gonna make any accusations against yeah, this guy. He's yeah, like yeah. perfect. He doesn't even curse. He doesn't. You know. So I had a good uh, talk with him. You know, it was over Zoom and uh, check it out. Jesus, it's been a couple of years since last we talked to you and. Everything that's happening now in your life, I've been, dude, I've been, I've been seeing what's, what has been happening with you the past few months, the special, this documentary, the fact that like you have now ascended to that next threshold in the comedy scene, and it's all kind of happening at the same time, representing all the work that I've seen you put in, buddy. How do you feel, dog? I don't know. It's, it's like I'm, I'm, I'm happy the work is seeing the light of day. I'm, you know, in this business, you know, we do so much work and only so much of it is actually like gets put out and. I don't know. I'm I'm happy. The journey has been like super fun. I've I've been working hard. I'm you know this is a, an exciting time. This documentary that's awesome. I, you know I've always heard you know a lot of the stories about you know you and your parents from your comedy, from your sets at the at the clubs. Um, and it's cool to see your actual parents see you taking care of them, and see this journey. So tell us, it's called Care to Laugh. Um, yep. Tell us about the documentary and what we've seen. So the documentary Care to Laugh is a documentary that's out now. You can you know, rent it, stream it. And it's a documentary that ARP Studios put together uh, a few years ago. Um, it started with an, uh, like, a, like a study that they did with Google and they wanted to find out what caregivers needed the most. And the study concluded that caregivers need two things and it's laughter and it's time. And uh, ARP Studios put together a night at the Hollywood Improv where they brought out caregivers and caregivees for a night of comedy and a nice dinner. And I, I mean, that show was a, a success and they wanted to do it on the East Coast. They wanted to do it in New York and they reached out. They're like, can you do, you know, Care to Laugh in New York? And I may, uh, uh, unfortunately I was unable to do it. And it was because my, my, my dad was sick and I had to take on more responsibility at home. And, you know, I got to meet the people over at ARP Studios and they, and they reached out and they said, would you want to be the subject of a documentary? And I spoke to my parents and, you know, I kind of left the ball in their court and they said yes. And for a year, they followed my parents and I and, and this documentary showcases me pursuing comedy, following my dreams, taking care of my parents and everything in between. So uh, it's a story that's common. I mean, one in five millennials are caregivers and I fit under that demographic. And, and you know, this is a this is a story that resonates with people all over because you know, where the baby boomers are getting older and the millennials are having to step into the role of caregiver. And that's, on top of that, culturally, that's just what we do. Uh, tell me more about behind the scenes, how the documentary came together. Were you working on this documentary before ARP got involved or did they get involved and you're like, hey, you hear me talking about my parents and I take care of my parents, let's put this on the documentary. Yeah, that's basically how it happened. I mean, I was always, you know, as a stand-up, I speak my truth, and I've been a caregiver from such a young age that that's what I talked about. That's what I knew. That that was my expertise about living with my parents and taking care of them. So when they reached out to me to be a part of the Care to Laugh event that they did, that's when they, you know, found out more about my story. And, and then ARP was the one that approached me and said, would you want to be the subject of the documentary and kind of tell this story? How did your parents feel about having a camera crew in the house? Because they seem like so nice and like and like reserved. Like I I don't know how how you know how did they react when you said, look, we're gonna film all this. Well, I, I mean, they agreed. They they said that it would be fun, and I don't think they really understood what it was. You know, once they saw the camera crew that was gonna follow us around. But to be honest, the ARP Studio um, crew. I, I mean, the the people behind the scenes. I mean, just treated my parents like so wonderfully that I, I, I it, it was just awesome to see and they felt so comfortable. So I say initially it was a little tough because I, I kept telling my dad, don't look into the camera. He like looked dead into it, you know? So, I mean, it, it was it was a fun experience to work with my folks in that capacity. It was like super cool. And, and you know, we shared a, a, a moment in time with the viewers at home. I mean, it was, it was a tough time. I mean, dur during that time I got the Late Late Show. So, that was unexpected. That was not even set up or anything. It just, as I'm, as they're doing the documentary, the opportunity to be on the Late Late Show at that time came up, and it was, it, it was a nice moment in the documentary. Yeah. 
I mean, it, yeah. it was a piece of good news that was well received during a time of, of, of a lot of chaos. Yeah, well, you you know, you got to capture a lot of, like you said, the chaos and the good stuff. All I mean, just because considering where you're getting to in your career, and I don't know that you're the kind of guy that's always videotaped everything on his phone like some people. It was nice that that was captured, that this part of your life is being captured by a professional yeah, you, camera crew and not just you and your phone. Yeah, yeah, no, because I definitely did the, the, the thing on my phone and they incorporated a little bit of that. But, right. I mean, this was a professional crew. I mean, it was, it was ARP Studios really wanted to capture this in the best light possible. And I think they did a great job. I mean, obviously, yeah. I'm, I'm a little biased. You know, they followed my family and I. But, I, I mean, it was just wonderful a wonderful experience working with ARP Studios and, and you know, people could go watch uh, the documentary out now. So everybody has to check out Care to Laugh. Uh, when can we see that and where? Uh, Care to Laugh, you can download it wherever you consume uh, movies. You download it, you can rent it. It's out now. Uh, stay at home, son, on no Showtime. Comma. No comma. Stay at home, stay uh, son, no comma, Showtime. Stay at home, son, Showtime, out now. Yo, we got Roosters, we got Giles, we got Venice Beach in the house. And when we come back from a commercial break, who we talking to? Riza. Stay tuned. We're back on the zoo, we're in Venice. We got the Venice skate park behind us. Do you skateboard? I don't. Well, I've fallen off a couple times, so I just skateboard. So up. you just, okay. And, uh, Maybe I don't have balance elbow, like that. No, you get elbow huh? pads, you get knee pads, you wear a little helmet. <laughs> little floaties too, yeah. just in case. Oh my God, that'd be funny. <laughs> you gotta, gotta we have floaties. Beach. Okay, next time that we come to, to Venice Beach, you're going and you're doing the skate park with, with the floaties, floaties on. Yeah. And a salvavida. Yeah. A salvavida, I don't even know how to call it in, in English. A donut. Is that what you call yeah, it? Yeah, just a donut. Okay, yeah. who'd you tell us did you talk to? You've talked to a lot of people lately. I have, yeah. So the latest interview I had was with Risha. Uh, she's Argentinian, but she's Risha. A yeah, Risha. I thought it was Risha. Risha. When I saw it, when I saw it on the rundown, I'm thinking Risha from like Wu Tang Clan. Excuse my Spanish. Uh, when she says it in Spanish, she's like Risha, I believe. You know. And what's and what's her music? So, like? I don't know. Uh, her music's like you know. Uh, her latest song is like a little pop mix, a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. No, but she's super dope, actually. Uh, it's I think these Zoom inter uh, interviews are really funny okay. because people have a lot going on in the back. Yeah. So she was actually moving out. She's like, I'm in the process of moving out. She's like, but I saved the posters for like this meeting or whatever. Oh, <laughs> that's do. hilarious. It's okay. crazy. Yeah, okay. people are living their daily lives but having interviews. So. Have you done any of the interviews from your house? Yeah. I did one. The little, uh, no, no. Remember and, the person? Yes, and yeah. then, and then, and then you gotta get some of your roommates to like pop in, like they're your pets. Oh, yeah. You know, just walking in the <laughs> oh background. Oh my god. I do have two dogs though. And what kind of dogs? Uh, I actually don't know. <laughs> Are they like mutts? They, Describe like, them. Maybe like Rottweilers? Like Rottweilers? Yeah, like they're big, you know? Yeah, they're big. When one of them jumps, he's like this tall. And so, you, but is he mixed breed? Probably. Okay. I don't know. Like you? Right. Like us all. Nobody knows. All right, so what's your name again? <laughs> Risa. All right, check it out. It's Risha. I'm moving out, so my room is entirely like empty. You see posters there, but that, that's it. There's nothing else. End of it. That's it. That's wild. <laughs> You're moving out. Where Where are you right now? Uh, I'm in Madrid. I'm living like not so where I want to be. I want to be in Malasaña and I'm far away. So I'm moving back to Malasaña, which is like the cool artist uh, neighborhood here. I love it. I love it. Because you're originally from Argentina, correct? Yeah. So what's the I, of Spain? Uh, I... I lived in Argentina until I was like 12, and then I moved here with my dad only. Mm. And uh, he was already living here since I was like one, because he was like working here and stuff. And um, yeah, I came here like, okay, let me just test it. Let me see if I want to stay. And then I never left and I never will. <laughs> so let's just start. I'm gonna, why you got out of grano? I'm gonna go straight to it. <laughs> because I, I love it, I love it. Because you're an openly queer artist, correct? Yeah. Okay, so was that hard? Was that like something that you had to go through, like feeling a little vulnerable um, and stuff? Because I, when I came here to Madrid, I started making music. Like, I signed up with Universal Publishing and stuff when I was like two months into living in Madrid, like very, very soon. And I realized that I liked my ex girlfriend and stuff uh, the next month or something like that. So, thankfully, in that sense, 
when people started to notice me and my music was playing and stuff, I was already like very okay with it. So publicly, in that sense, artistically, I never struggled. But um, I, it it was a sh- in my personal life, <laughs> to be honest. Most of my family in Argentina like didn't know I was queer mm. until I started publicly talking about it on my Instagram and making songs about it. And some of them still think like it's like a show, like it's a put up. Like I'm not really queer. It's it's really <laughs> music wise. Uh, I was really happy when I started like releasing music that was explicitly talking about girls because I was already releasing songs that were about my ex-girlfriend or girls that I liked and stuff, but it was never like she, her, you know what I mean? Listen. So when I started doing that, it was like, hmm, fuck yeah. <laughs> into that, we're going to go into your latest release, all right? Live the Weekend? Yeah. With Girly, <laughs> okay? Yes. And I, I read that it's known as like el himno. Bisexual. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to us si about that. Lo un poco así. Like when I released the song, uh, people started being like, "Oh my God, this is such a bisexual bob. This is a bisexual anthem." But um, <laughs> yeah, we were we were planning the the music video with with Girly with Millie, and I was like, "Okay, then this should happen. We should bring my friends. Like I I hang out with a, a lot of the skater scene in Madrid. So I was like, we should get them to be in the video. We should get these people that. And we're like, why don't we get tattoos in the video? And she was like, oh, but like, for real? And I was like, yes, like, for real, like, real ones. <laughs> we didn't think about it much. Like, we decided the same day, like, two hours before the shoot that we were going to get that part of the song, yeah. <laughs> so it was very spontaneous. What was the one moment where, like, you, when you were first meeting Girlie, where you were like, you know what? She's dope. I like her. Like, what was that moment? <laughs> um, actually, I, know, I knew her from before we actually met. Like, I used to really like, I used to, I still like her music and stuff, you know? But when I was younger, when I was, like, 16, something like that, I was really like, damn, this bitch is really cool. And then I DM'd her, and she DM'd me at the same time. And we started, like, talking, and uh, the idea of making a song together came up. And I was like, okay, cool, send me, like, a little loop, something. She, so she sent that, and I started working from there. And then she was like, I'm just I'm just going to go to Madrid to write this song. And I was like, oh, okay, just come over, I guess, or whatever. I felt like she exudes this really, like, chill, and, like, mm, she doesn't judge anybody, and she's really open about everything, and she's really, like, she flows a lot, and I like people like that. Like, I like people that let you leave with you and, like, are, like, yeah, support you and are very, like, loving and caring, and it's really cool. So there's there's a, there's a I guess the video goes along with it. It's called The Morning After. Ah, yes, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so that, I feel like that's the first time I've seen that, where there's, like, I don't even know what to call it, like, an additional video yeah. to this song. The last time that she was in Madrid, when we wrote the song, actually, um, she was, like, going through a lot <laughs> let's leave it at that and i was like okay okay you know what we're gonna do i'm gonna take you to this spot that we go with my friends and we're gonna sit down and we're gonna talk so i took her to this place like in madrid you you go to moncloa you go up a hill up a hill up a hill up a hill and then there's this place where you can see like the sunset and stuff and we talked there and we just spent like the entire afternoon there so it was kind of like recreating what actually happened <laughs> but for the video my friends hated me for this because you can only see like us two like sitting there but after shooting the video because it was kind of like already a party and then my friends passed out so they were like on the couch like dead and i was like i'm not sleeping because we need to go see the sunrise to this hill to shoot the video 6 a.m i'm like wake up wake up around the house i woke everybody up everybody looked at me like oh my god can you not please can you not do this now and we took a, an Uber. I made my friends like walk up a hill at 6 a.m., kind of hungoverish. Damn. <laughs> You're like, si no me conocían, <laughs> me van a conocer hoy. Está ahí como, esto, o sea, está perfecto. Y mi amigo, my best friend, mi mejor amigo, was like, uh, you know what? Like, I hate that I have to wake up, but this is like the coolest way to end this day. But yeah. <laughs> I love it. So if you haven't gone to check out Live the Weekend and then the morning after, which was indeed the morning after. <laughs> Well, it, it was, yeah. <laughs> Are we talking to somebody else after the break? Yeah, Ella, Elena Rose. Is that a question mark or a statement? Statement. Ooh, okay, cool. How about that? Stay tuned. So we're here in 
Venice, and you talked to yet another person by Zoom. I did. Like, I did. wow. Somebody's doing interviews. Who's this one with? You know what? Okay, quick quick note. I feel kind of weird talking on Zoom with people, you Why? know? Because how do you have a human connection over the computer? I know. I don't know, personally. Okay, anyways. Yeah, I spoke to Elena Rose, uh, but she was super dope. <laughs> okay, why? Uh, we bonded in that we're both like the older sisters. Okay. So sometimes it feels weird to like do things for ourselves. You think, because you, know? you, you are an older sister in real life. Yeah. But I, yeah. What do you mean in real life? As opposed to what? And what does your sister think about you? What sister? Elena Rose? No. <laughs> Oh, do you have a sister or a brother? No, I have two brothers. What do they think about you? Um, I think they think I'm dope. Yeah? You know? yeah. Okay. They're always trying to hang sister. out with me. Yeah, she thinks I'm cool. <laughs> I think she's cool. So what's up with Elena Rose? So you guys bonded over being older sisters? Yeah, older sisters. But her music can be... Uh, a lot of people say her music's provocative. Why? But because uh, you know her videos are show a little bit more. It's she booty, talks, she it's talks fancy. about no, she talks about femininity, but she said it's not provocative. Does she talk about femininity or sexuality? It, the 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 intersection of it all. Okay. You know, why limit yourself? Okay? Of course. Anyways, she said it's not provocative, it's education. What's her hits on? I <laughs> don't do that to me. But I'm sure she'll mention it. Check it out. It's her uh, amazing Zoom interview where she bonded like sisters with... Elena Rose. Elena Rose. Aquí nos encontramos con Elena Rose. How are you doing today? Nice to meet you, mi amor. Gracias. Un placer conocerte. I love it because we're going to be doing Spanglish because a mí también a veces se me atraviesa el español and I'm like, look, I need to do it in English for a little bit, you know? <laughs> I love it. ¿Dónde estás tú? Uh, Los Ángeles. Yeah. Oh, and awesome. you're actually from Miami, right? I am from Miami y estoy acá ahora. Okay. I feel like you have a story to tell though because you were also like born and raised in Puerto Rico and then Venezuela. Like, what was that? <laughs> the whole thing. I was born here and I grew up between Puerto Rico and Caracas, Venezuela, which is where my family is from. They're Venezuelan. And I came back when I was 19, um, and I've been here for five years. So I feel like Miami definitely has a lot of that culture, you know, of a lot of immigrants that have gone to Miami, but, like, you went back to the motherland, you know, so you kind of carry those traditions. Yes. I went, yo como que me fui, recogí todo, and I came back. Well, let's talk about your newest song, Coco, okay? What does Coco mean? You like it? I do like it, and I'm not going to lie, I started listening to your other, like, music, which we're going to touch base on, right? But, like, La Ducha, and mm -hmm. I thought something specific that you said on one of the BTS videos where you're like, I'm not provocative, I'm educational. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Thank so, I'm like, I feel like that kind of ties in with Coco a little bit, too, because you could also make the statement that Coco is a little bit provocative, right? I've had it, I've, obviously, I've had it, or that it's dark and, like, dark oriented but de verdad no es. Coco fue una canción um, que yo hice de manera de descarga. Yo acababa de terminar de, de grabar eh, mis primeros dos videos, Sandung y Fenomenal, que lo hicimos la misma semana. And I went to the studio y mi manager, my partner, me dijo, get on the mic, haz lo primero que te venga a la mente and just have fun. Y no sé por qué, la primera palabra que me salió fue, Coco, no me miras así, no te me pegues que te choco. So, para mí se convirtió en dos cosas. Se convirtió en una manera de expresar como que si tú me estás retando, I, yo, yo voy a, you know, a hacerlo contigo. Like, let's go. I'm ready. Like, don't f*** with me vibes. Entonces, fue como una manera de, de, de también como que, ok, si la gente piensa que yo soy esto, then voy a poner un poquito like, no, you really have to see esta parte de mí que tú no has visto. So, man, like, ¿qué, qué tiene de malo un día salir and just dance and, y, y moverte raro así no sepa, you know, like, bailar. So, eso es lo que es Coco, una manera bien abstracta y diferente de decir, you can be yourself. Como ese otro nombre que le das a like ese, like, you know, the yeah. diablitas coming out. <laughs> Hay un bicho en México. Yo soy mexicana. Bueno, mis papás son de México. Oh, mira. <laughs> oh that's beautiful. La jovencita de Guadalupe. I'm all about her. Bueno, el dicho es que dice, like, que tiene los pantalones bien puestos. You know? So for mm -hmm. you, I feel like it's really hard for a lot of people to just be so, like, not necessarily explicit, but just open about, like, yeah, I have this, like, vulnerable side and I own up to it. Like, the owning up part is very difficult yeah. for a lot of people to do. Where, ¿De dónde nace esto? Mi impulsividad de querer poder conectar con las personas me llevó a entender que primero tenía que conocerme a mí. Entonces, cuando 
cuando tú te enfrentas en una situación donde dices, quizás yo no encajo siempre 100% dentro de los estándares por muchas formas, por la manera en la que me veo, por la manera en que me expreso, te das cuenta que si yo tomo en serio mi papel, mi rol como líder dentro de una industria, como mujer además, eso es lo único, mi único propósito tiene que ser ese. Educar a las personas, por eso es que entra lo de, lo de la ducha. Educarme a mí primero para saber qué es lo que es mejor para mí, porque entonces yo tampoco estoy incitando a la gente a que anden por ahí siendo rebeldes o like a lo loco, haciéndole... No, o sea, si tú estás conectado con tu ser, las cosas que tú haces no afectan a nadie alrededor de ti de ninguna manera, sino que alimentan tu alma, tu ser, hazlo. Pero hazlo like, honrando quien tú eres tus ancestros, tu cultura, de donde tú vienes, tu madre, tu abuela, la gente que te crió, todas esas cosas porque nosotros somos la suma de muchas cosas y es lo que yo siempre le digo a la gente. So, si ya nosotros de por sí somos la suma de tantas culturas, de tantas raíces, de tantas personas, ¿cómo nos vamos a meter dentro de una caja y decir, no, yo tengo que ser de este y de este? So, a través de mi música, que tengo ese momento de que la gente me preste atención, me gusta siempre poder mandar ese mensaje. Conócete y honrate y valórate y cuídate y expándete. O sea, todos tenemos un, un, algo único que nos hace ser especial. Y hablando de eso, porque tú has tenido mucha experiencia escribiendo canciones para otros, otros artistas, ¿verdad? Very successful songs. <laughs> um, pero, like, what's, what's been the experience writing songs for yourself? You know, and like materializing it in your own world. Divino, it's been, um, me tomó más tiempo hacerlo, para mí por alguna razón siempre ha sido más fácil ponerme en los zapatos de otra persona que estar en los míos me imagino por, por mi crianza mi mamá siempre fue una mujer como que no, tú antes de que te metas la comida en la boca, make sure que la gente que está ahí contigo esté comiendo ya y you no know, like, esa fue la manera en que a mí me criaron so, like, you know, siempre he sido más como que la, la que protege y la que cuida y luego es algo que yo, yo puedo whatever, no comer, lo que sea. So, me pasó lo mismo cuando comencé a trabajar con estos artistas que fue como que okay, yo quiero eh, brindar mi 100% a esto primero y luego me di cuenta, pero eso, en ese 100% que yo estoy poniendo estoy yo y estoy yo en diferentes maneras, en diferentes géneros, en diferentes estilos, so, soy quien soy yo. So, eso me llevó a, a, a ir para dentro, de escribir para mí es mucho más profundo que obviamente escribir para otra persona, porque aunque yo quiera ponerme, aunque yo me ponga en el lugar de la otra persona, no soy esa persona, ¿sabes? No, I'm not judging you, pero we always judge ourselves mucho más fuerte que otra gente, so fue, fue un trabajo de amor propio bien fuerte y, y, y when I got it, it was like, oh my God, se abrió esa puerta de mi vida que I, I never had it. Umi, what? what's coming up next? We're going to talk to the cast of Murder in the Woods. It's all going to be right here on the zoo. Bam. Yo, we are back. We're on Venice Beach. It's summertime back. edition, summer COVID. The zoo. We've been doing our thing. Right here, Venice you know, Beach. The sun is out. <laughs> Sun's out, guns out. Dude, my Bro. hair's all over the place. Like, I'm feeling like Medusa. My hair's all over the place, too. I should have combed my hair this way instead of this way. I went this way. <laughs> You're supposed to stand in the direction of the wind. You know, according, that's what Jesus Trejo said in his uh, in his thing. He's like, I have a comb over, so I'd be walking in the direction of the wind. Always, that's hilarious. I quoted him though. That's not my joke. That's I said awesome. It. Okay. No, no, it's, it's, your, it's your joke now. So coming up next, we actually have a great segment. We talked to Danny Trejo and some of the people in the new movie Murder in the Woods, and it's like one of those throwback slasher films from like the 80s, mm, where like the murder, okay. the axe murder, but everyone's Latino. Okay. What do you right. think? Um, I don't do murder movies, so why? I don't, I don't do that. You just that. get traumatized. What the hell? <laughs> I had to stop watching Criminal Minds for the same reason. It makes like possibilities a little too real. You know, you start thinking about like, who should I watch out for? Yeah, don't watch Criminal Minds. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I get paranoid. I don't do scary movies. No. Yeah, you know, I usually do scary movies when I was a kid, but as I started to live life and I realized there were dark emotions, there were dark demons in this world, there's evil. I started to be like more emotionally destabilized by uh, scary movies, so I stopped watching. Okay. But I still like The Exorcist and like scary, like, you know, ghost movies and things like that. My dad, this is why I don't watch scary, my dad used to scare me. I like the heightened parts. Like, I remember we would sit together and I, I think it was like The Ring or something, yeah. you know? Yeah, he would like get behind me and he would like shake me. Oh, dude, roosters. That's hilarious. <laughs> Whoa, oh. check out the roosters, Robs. 
Wow, wow. they're beautiful. Thank you so much. <laughs> That's awesome. Speaking of roosters, yes. all right, we, we go got with the main gallo. El main gallo is Danny Trejo. I've actually got a chance to speak to him a bunch of times. Uh, he's super cool. And then the rest of the cast, too. You know what's awesome is seeing these movies and seeing that, like, people that I'm friends with are in these movies. Oh, that's you know? dope. Yeah, got yeah. Chelsea and Dong in the movie and a few other people that have been on the zoo. Like, half the cast of this movie has been on the zoo, including D.T. himself, Danny Trejo. So check this out. It's Murder in the Bam. Woods. When you work on a horror movie, how is the vibe on set? Do you guys play tricks on each other to scare each other a little bit behind the scenes? You play oh, it cool. Like, I always <laughs> wonder if you guys are like actually spooky. <laughs> you, stay, you stay in your trailer, I'll stay in mine. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, I, I definitely think there was no pranks happening for sure. Uh, not. When we, yeah, when we were working, we were definitely in the zone. Um, yeah. And like I said, being on location, it's like we really didn't need anything else. The house was scary. It was really scary. We shot at night. We shot from like, what, 8 p.m. to like 6 a.m. And it was, yeah, we really didn't need much to be scared. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, there was one exception, though. We did some of our, our best bonding over the crafty table, just so you know. Oh, that's oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Jordan is like uh, there was a delay reaction there. Thank I you for that. that. <laughs> it's all right. I mean, hey, look, it, it was. Uh, I, I think you know it's funny because Kate had mentioned something earlier about uh, about it being so cold and so freezing. I think yeah. the how cold we got and how huddled up we worked together. I think there was a lot oh. of fun. Uh, yeah, I agree. Realm. <laughs> a lot of colors, <laughs> a lot of coicas. Yeah, yeah, exactly. a little bit, yeah. Where did you guys shoot it that it was so cold? Topanga Canyon. Topanga Canyon. Yeah. But in like the nighttime. Hills, yeah. Nighttime is, is cold. Like I mean, one, yeah, cold. like what, midnight to like 6 a.m. It was really chilly. And it was during the winter. I think it was in February we shot it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, was, that, yeah. it got pretty chilly. It got pretty chilly. Yeah. How was working with Danny Trejo? It, yeah. It was amazing. Oh, my God. Yeah. It was, it was incredible, I think. It just... Um, Again, to be to be new as I was on that set, to be a new act, like to be to have my first big project and to be able to work with somebody so just he's so famous in my eyes and just in, in everyone else's eyes for that matter. And it's it was just it was he he kind of reminded me of one of my uncles actually. Uh, I know he has that vibe, right? Yeah. Like a, like an uncle, oh, like you like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what I, what I liked about him. Uh, working with somebody who had a, a lot more caliber uh, yeah that was just more recognized uh, uh compared to myself newbie you know at the time um i think he had such an ease about him that was very nice to watch you know me as myself you know being a little younger at the time i was definitely a little bit of an eager beaver you know kind of like still learning the ropes and to see somebody like that just to show up and just with ease do his job it, it was nice to see that foreshadow the kind of comfort I want to have uh, as I grow as an actor. Nice. Yeah, he, I mean, uh, so Danny Trejo, we're both from the San Fernando Valley. So he, I'm from Yay. Solmar and he's from San Fernando. I know. Woo -woo. So <laughs> having a conversation with him and knowing like he takes his like cars to the same mechanic my dad takes his cars to, like, we were able to bond on where we live. So that was like so beautiful in itself. And like, not to mention like on set, I just learned so much from him. So it was like also knowing like, wow, we're from the same place and you're doing you're it. You're homies. Right, we're homies. 